Hello and welcome back to Podcast Against Praxis. I'm David, my pronouns are he and him. I'm James, my pronouns are they and them. I'm Jamie, my pronouns are he and him. I'm Rob, mine are he and him. And I'm Alistair, my pronouns are also he and him. It's it's a cultural committee episode, don't turn off. It's, it's the Andorsi call you've been waiting for. <laughs> no, it's not. It's fucking not prick. I love um, Star Trek. No. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. Stargate uh, SG One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of you come on this podcast. No, uh, we are going to talk about in some ways, finally and hopefully finally, because I'd like to never have to fucking mention it again. Uh, Armando Iannucci's wonderful masterpiece, The Thick of It. And also Armando Iannucci himself. And to do this, we have brought on Guy Understander Extraordinaire and, like, the original fucking nexus of all British left-wing podcasting, Jack from Real Politic. Hello. Happy to be here. And I feel like I, uh, you know, I don't want to make some kind of, like, anti-woke statement, so I I will state that uh, my pronouns are also he and him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not no, everyone... Right, not everyone listened to Real Politics, but everyone that did listen to Real Politics started a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and since I uh, they terminated my contract over at Spike, I no longer feel the need to say no. I refuse <laughs> to give my my program pro, uh, pronouns. See, I refuse to even say the word pronouns. So, yeah. <laughs> the word sticks much in your throat too. like so many slurs. <laughs> exactly. They just can't. I can't get them out. Uh, no, great to be here. Great to be here. Big, big fan of all you comrades do, and um, it's uh, it's an honour to have been picked as your Ianucci. What should we say? Not expert, uh, whisperer. Let's go with whisperer. Mm. The, the Ianucci knower. Tonight we mm. are indeed talking about Armando Ianucci's The Thick of It, uh, a TV show which I think. Anyone who's vaguely interested in politics has probably heard of or seen at some point. Yeah. But, um. Mm -hmm. And, like, even if you haven't by this point, you will have used phrases and expressions and bits from that show, even if you didn't know that that, that that's what you were doing. Like, yeah, like there's the episode of The Thick of It where they say, this is just like an episode of In the Thick of It. (laughs) (laughs) I love it when they say the name of the show. (laughs) title drop (laughs) yeah so uh it's a tv show if anyone that doesn't know is a tv show that is set in uh a a fictitious uh department within within government uh the department of social affairs and later social affairs and citizenship uh focusing on uh, a minister and the people basically immediately surrounding that minister plus their opposite number uh in what well whether it's the labor party minister it also talks about the Tory uh, shadow minister. Uh, and when those all swap as well. So it is mainly about a department that doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. And all the all the like party and political machinations that occur in the mid to late 2000s and just beyond. Should we just tackle straight off the bat why it's a department that doesn't exist? Rather than off the any of the very real people. departments that do very real shit all the time. I mean, it's a uh, what's what's you call it a device so that they can talk about whatever they want to within the context of the show, right? Mm. Yeah, partially. It's also an act of fucking cowardice. <laughs> it's also if you put it in its closest analogy, which is probably the Home Office. Like you'd have to put everybody in jack boots, and they're really loud on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a broad remit, isn't it? Social affairs and citizenship. That uh, like yeah, it, I mean, it kind of, they kind of seem cool. to do like stuff that the minister of culture would do normally, and uh, yeah, a, yeah. A there's wide some earth. immigration stuff. There's some <laughs> yeah. like health stuff. It's yeah, it's Benefit I mean stuff. Th- yeah, loads of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. stuff yeah. Non-job, like they constantly talk about how that minister has fuck all to do and isn't a real thing. Like <laughs> you know, it's like all the jobs Angela Rayner has to compensate for the fact they took that other one away. From her. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think one of the other reasons that they gave it to just this, this illusory department that doesn't exist with no real responsibilities, it gets a bit of everything, is because of the political purpose of this show, um, which is. Like essentially, they wanted to be able to portray the incompetence 
of, uh, you know, members of government without having to at any point turn around and go, oh, but this has real world consequences, by the way. Um, and so the best way to do that is to give them like a, an office which doesn't really do anything, that's just fiddling around the edges, that isn't, that doesn't actually have real world implications off the back of it at any point. Because that allows them to trivialize the stakes, I think. But more on that later, I guess. Yeah, um, and yeah. that lines up with Hayanucci's politics personally because he loves <laughs> the idea of thinking around the edges and doing fuck all of consequence. Yeah, well, there's like there's one per there's one person they directly kill throughout like the whole duration of the show, and it's like you know the real life government ministers are just stacking up bodies on the daily, you know. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, so uh, just a brief so. There's like nearly fifteen hours worth of TV for this show, right? So there's no yeah. way the we things could we do for this. you fucking yeah. listeners, by the way. <laughs> yeah, ja- Jamie was watching multiple episodes at the same time. One eye focused on each, <laughs> just in order to be able to make sure that he'd properly absorb the content for this for this episode. But um, yeah, so it's, it's a bit too it's much to run through the, op- the honestly. Content, the- the later seasons are fucking far too long and tedious, even with it on like one and a half times speed. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it it certainly see, feels to me like one of those shows that suffers from having the increased budget. Mm. Yeah. Well, the last season makes the baffling formal choice to completely split up the ensemble, and it's like fair enough. Like, I mm. guess if if uh, you know the the government, if sorry, if like the Labour surrogate party are out of government, then they're not going to be in their old offices, and they're not going to be working with Terry anymore because she's a civil servant. Fine, if you want to make uh, Glenn defect to the Lib Dems, but at least intersperse the Tory characters and the Labour characters throughout the episodes. Instead, you go like whole episodes without any Malcolm, whole episodes without fucking, you know, Peter Mandelson tutting at, not Peter Mandelson the far (laughs) less right wing and problematic (laughs) Peter Mannion uh, tutting away you know, at Stuart's newfangled fancy modern conservatism you know, it's like that was a very strange choice to me because you only get them together for the final two episodes starting with the Inquiry one which I think we're going to talk about later yeah. yeah, should we yeah. should we quickly yeah. do a brief overview of the characters just so that we've got some context for who these people are? Um, yeah. So uh, the first one or two seasons, depending on whether you're watching this on DVD or not, uh, stars. Um, it's got Hugh Abbott is the government minister for the for Dosak, uh, and his uh, advisors Oliver Reader and Glenn Cullen. Uh, as well as the uh, Maleficent uh, Malcolm Tucker, uh, the um, Alistair Campbell stand-in, who rears his head throughout the... Sh- like, every every um, media thing... I mean, that- basically the star of the fucking show, isn't he? Yeah. You know yeah, I mean, I mean he's, he's it literally Malcolm Tucker is in the, the film spin-off, In the Loop, which we're not really going to touch on too much, I don't think, tonight. Yeah. Uh, one one thing to know on about Malcolm already. Tucker, though, because like I read it, I, I was just skimming like Wikipedia for you know facts to entertain you, the audience, with. Um, but apparently, like it's not just not like um, he's uh, Malcolm Tucker's not just based on Alistair Campbell. He's also apparently partly based on Harvey Weinstein, which uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, damn. Yeah, but it makes sense, though. I mean, citation Wikipedia editor, so, you know, not my fault and <laughs> not my libel. Did Oliver know? Cam add that one? I know, yeah, Oliver Cam. About 60% of Wikipedia is Oliver Cam. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no. I, uh, it, I don't want to give mean, Wiki- yeah. Oliver Cam five pounds while I'm reading Wikipedia. I go fuck <laughs> so, well, Jimmy, Jimmy Wales, who founded Wikipedia, is a right-wing cunt anyway. I like, hate Corbyn, big Zionist. Like, But... Um, <laughs> All that aside, yeah, Malcolm is like the, uh, you know, he's like the star at the centre of the show, isn't he? He brings yeah. that, well, that star power, and that's one of the reasons why I think the fourth season didn't work as well, because they had made the show such a cult of personality around him. Yeah, mm. mm-hmm. yeah, it's like the character starts out as like, you know, they're, they're like, oh, well, this this is the sort of thing like a spin doctor is actually like, and look at what a twat he is. But, like, people fucking loved it. It's like, haha, the funny sweary man. Look how yeah. angry he is. Mm. So by, like, the by the specials and the third series, it's like they're just doing it for the people who like to see Malcolm, like, do you know what I mean? Yell, like, fucking sexual threats at people and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of, and uh, then by in the his fourth, own words, violent sexual imagery. 
Yeah, by the fourth series, they try to pivot to like, what if we did pathos about the guy's downfall? And it's like, I wouldn't give a shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we already saw the film Downfall. <laughs> it's been yeah. covered. I think. Um, I think the thick of it really suffered in its later seasons from the fact that the political class as a whole started to take it seriously and really got invested in it. And gave it a lot of like, oh, you know, we all really enjoy this, haha, which made it important. Spent an image disease. Mm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Should we should we He's... talk about the first episode? Like, we, we sort of talked about the characters that are chiefly available in the first couple of seasons. So I think. Yeah, we'll bring we'll you know, we'll onboard more characters as they uh, as they come yeah, along. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. So yeah, for the moment we've just got Dose out. We've got Hugh Abbott and uh, the crew so far. Um, did, we, did we mention Terry? Did we mention Terry? I thought I mentioned Terry. Yeah, Terry we mentioned Terry. a civil servant, that, uh, the the press relations civil servant who... Press officer, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Later, later who, uh, fleshed out as having come from, um, apparently having come from like the chief press officer at Waitrose. So that that's like who she's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that her backstory or like who inspired her? Uh, apparently that's like, her backstory, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, what no, she, she did before, that. yeah. That is perfect, actually. No, there are some yeah, great it, it really is, show, isn't it? to be fair. Um, but, uh, you know, well, I, I've got to say, like, I love this show. But, you know, I, I was just I've just been for all these years. I've been wondering what where did my favorite character, uh, uh, Hugh Abbott, go? Uh, just you know, he, he was there all the season. He was he, the star he went, he went of the to show. Australia and then never returned. Yeah, he just got <laughs> reshuffled into the bin, didn't he? <laughs> died, died on the way back to his home prison sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so the first episode, uh, I think, starts out pretty strongly, to be honest, because oh, yeah. uh, it, it it starts out um, with is it Malcolm who charges into that office? Yeah, is it? Yeah, Mal- Malcolm turns up to the office to uh, personally eviscerate uh, a minister. And it's basically the current minister of Dosak, uh, Lawton. I can't remember what his first name is. Cliff. Uh, Cliff. Yeah. Cliff Lawton. Yeah. Is uh, his face is plastered all over the, over the front of the Daily Mail uh, with a caption that reads "Lawton dangles by a thread." So, like, we're two minutes in, and we've already got a point about how media influences government. Yeah. And. Like this is the tone for the entire show. Like, is the like the the problem with this show is it's very good. <laughs> it is very good. It's still a lot of it, not everything, but like on the rewatch, still holds up. I still blame you, the audience, for making me listen, but uh, watch. But you know, it's it, it's not the worst thing Look, we've watched for this fucking show. The the mm. the uh, the listeners aren't to blame uh, for this one. Technically, it's Jack. Because he did a tweet <laughs> about the thick of it, and I thought, oh, that'd be a good idea to do an episode about. So you can blame him. And not Was me. it specifically about the thick of it, or just part of my general feud with Armando Iannucci on a on a personal <laughs> level? <laughs> I think I think I think it was chiefly to do with the thick of it, but also the fact that you said that it was done by a person that you viscerally hate. So it's yeah, a bit of column yeah, A, a bit of column B. <laughs> Yes, I think this this tweet was something like, this guy has made some of my favourite shows of all time, and I fucking detest him. That was it. Which, I think. Well, it's also yeah, like, I mean... it, It's like the people you hate the most are also like the people who can disappoint you, because like... That's it. You know, because he made brilliant, brilliant good stuff, and now no, he's just nobody's... like a tra- like a fucking burning trash heap. Yeah, mm. nobody's more disappointing than he is. Yeah. <laughs> he does have a general air of disappointment about him these days actually but um you know yeah it's not just the thick of it though like i love veep i think it's not just uh you know the thick of it done american it's a great show in its own right although um, yeah you know it's not just because of ianucci because it continued being great after he left but he did put in those mm-hmm. you know the building blocks for its continued yeah. greatness and alan partridge again Fuck, still fucking brilliant now that he's no longer writing it. In fact, possibly more so than ever, in my opinion. But um, yeah, he he was there at the inception of that, and uh, you know, I I can't take any of that away from him. But just his like blithering centrist routine these days, it's uh, yeah, it's not one of his better bits, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, one of the, uh, the funny thing is like 
what I realised, because I, I basically made notes of, of what, while I was watching, I was making like little notes of stuff that just sort of stood out to me that I thought was either worth worth mentioning or worth thinking about. And I ended up realising what a lot of what I was doing was just writing down the stuff that was quite good satire, and it's like, fuck, he's got me again. Um, <laughs> like, um, for example, like uh, there's a bit where um, Malcolm says to this, this minister that's about to be sacked, none of this negative stuff is coming from us. And like we, like knowing what we know now about what the Labour right are like. Yeah, that's yeah. such cool yeah. light, isn't it? <laughs> like the, the thing, I think that one of the chief things that I, I, I want to sort of impress on everyone is that it's difficult to marry the man who made this to the actual show, right? Because how do you write something that is this on the money about so many things, not everything, granted, write so much stuff that's really on the money and then come away thinking this is just funny and doesn't say anything about the actual reality of politics. Like, it's, it is quite baffling. Yeah, it's, liberalism is just... It, yeah, so liberalism is a hell of a drug. It's, it, yeah, it's... It's the the talent that they have for like becoming like so closely aware to a problem. They can see the thing which is the problem. They just can't identify it as a problem. Yeah, well, like What's leaking the, um... and and like the collaboration between politicians and the media becomes like a recurring theme throughout the show. And like, yeah, of course, yeah. Malcolm mm-hmm. Malcolm was planting those stories in the press. Like, he wouldn't say yeah, that. Course. Oh no, it's not me, unless it obviously was him. But like, you know, mm-hmm. that becomes uh, you know, like the main source of drama in the final series of the show with the inquiry into leaking. And I have to say, like. It feels impossibly fucking quaint after the Corbyn years, whereas one of you mentioned a minute ago, like, it, that was just every day um, the right wing of the Labour Party would just leak shit to the press about what, uh, you know, that they thought would damage mm-hmm. the left. And, yeah. and it's just like, but I mean, that's, and he lost interest the, in it um, when that happened. That's the liberal mm. fucking comedian take on things, though, isn't it? It's like, mm-hmm. throughout, like, you know, obviously, like, all through the eighties and like most of the nineties, it was like you could you could go on and you could do spit and image and you could do stand up about how terrible politicians were because you were having to go with, like the Tories. And then when Labour got in, you could go on mock the week every fucking Wednesday or whenever, whenever it was and like fucking bang on about how shit like the Labour Party were because they're in government, you know. But again, it's safe to do that because not what's the alternative? You know, you get like neoliberals back in instead mm-hmm. of your ne- neoliberals, so. You don't really care, you know. You're getting paid to like sling ineffectual shit at them, no matter who's in charge. It's only once, like you know, there's a threat of something different that we saw them all like collectively shit their fucking pants <coughs> and start yeah. crying about it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so it's the whole uh, ten degrees to left of center in the good times, yeah. ten degrees to right of center and affects them personally, like in, in a nutshell. I mean, this, 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 I mean, this this ties into the like the thrust of the the central thrust of the first episode, right? Um, it so the this minister Cliff Lawton's been sacked, and they brought in uh, the hapless Hugh Abbott to replace him. Um, with Ollie Reader and uh, Glenn Cullen as his advisors, and the bulk of the episode is spent uh, at this point. Uh, so Hughes spoken to the Prime Minister and floated this idea of policy, and the Prime Minister sounded like he liked it, so uh, Hugh would like to announce that policy at a uh, press briefing at a, at a school somewhere. And there's a lot of toing and froing in the episode about whether or not this, episode, this uh, policy is actually going to happen or not and whether he's allowed to announce it or not but the very like so when just before we uh started recording this evening uh <laughs> i was i was just looking at the thick of it uh wikipedia article unsurprisingly and there was just a fucking incredible uh little excerpt in there uh which i'm just going to read to you now in similar fashion to yes minister the political parties involved are never mentioned by name and in series one and two, most policies discussed are fairly generic and non-ideological. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, bear this in mind. Bear this in mind <laughs> when I tell you what the policy of the proposal for yeah. that, that all, all this to do over was a benefits fraud snooper force. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but that was seen as like you know non-ideological in the Blair years. That was the center ground of politics at that time. Um, I mean, that is the center ground of politics. Do you remember is, those? Yes. Um, <laughs> do you remember those fucking adverts they they had on TV uh, yeah. during during the Blair oh years, God, where it was like yeah. like a fucking circle of light like you were being attacked by the misterons and it was like fucking um <laughs> it was like if you commit benefit Mr. fraud Bean about, about to be zapped down on your head <laughs> if you if, if you commit benefit fraud you could face a police interview under caution and it's like woo, shitting in my pants over here man do you know what i mean like <laughs> on yeah because i wanted to just bring this in on that point about like benefit fraud and stuff literally here's something yanucci said in that very recent interview uh with politics joe um, by the way, did Joe just like ne- uh, steal their naming convention from the TV channel Dave? Is 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 that what they, they went for with that? It seems like exactly the same move. Like, oh yeah, down to earth, blokey. Well, Dave's taken, I guess. Like, anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, saying? we're gonna bring M- many, to many uh, actors to be ground this evening. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't get away with calling themselves UK politics gold. Is the problem? <laughs> yeah, we're actually rebranding to uh, pr- Praxis Bill. It'll, you know, it, 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 it's more it's... <laughs> Bill of the people. Uh, yeah, I- Ianucci. Business fraud is ten times higher than benefits fraud, but we haven't had vans going around with posters saying, "If you see a businessman who's really screwing the system, ring this number." We don't have that. And then Iannucci gets increasingly impassioned. Why not? <laughs> because economically, it would make more sense. And, you know, I just had to post that picture of somebody, like, dragging Corbyn away from decking somebody at that point. Because it's like, <laughs> why not, Armando? Why not? I believe somebody did try and make that point. Like, uh, not just somebody, not just a private citizen, a comedy writer expressing this, this opinion, it... a, a political leader. And you were like... Fuck off, you you cunt. Nah, not having that shit. <laughs> is this, is yeah. this the yeah. same Armando Iannucci who didn't tweet about uh, child pol- poverty between the years 2014 and 2021, I want to say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about yeah. Could, weirdly, a wheelie just didn't come up in that period. But it's because we, uh, by then he became the the patron of whatever the charity is called that he's the patron of that is specifically about child poverty before that he just simply wasn't aware i guess child poverty action group yeah yeah well that's how it works isn't it? It. You, you you start to care about an issue when you get offered a place on their trust that's that's how it works um the yeah. thing is as well what you've got what you've got to remember is if the, we'd elected corbyn and he'd like fixed it so that we went after big business instead of benefits like fucking fraud then you know Iannucci couldn't like carve a career out of being the clever person who points that out to like prove how wacky politics is. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Just one more very similar uh, point from Iannucci oh. here. Uh, he says, um, the money is there, like talking about, you know, just like doing anything to help the poor, basically. The money is there. It just needs the will to, to, to change the priorities. How do, how do people, how do people in like this guy's personal life not... Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> at, at I think the very that. least, I would say, how could the busy- fucking <laughs> how could Ollie Dugmore or whoever from Joe not fucking say? Well, Armando, the last leader of the Labour Party specifically tried to, in your words, change the priorities of British politics. He did have, again, in Armando Inucci's words, the will to do that. And and he's saying if someone in charge at the Treasury would step up and say, actually, shall we get rid of child poverty? It could happen, Inucci says. <laughs> like, now, look, I've got many <laughs> criticisms of John McDonnell. I think he's basically, uh, he's gone com- completely down the toilet in recent years. I don't know how to dress it up. I, I'm not a fan of what he's been doing. Do I think that of all the the chancellors and shadow chancellors, the potential chancellors in recent years that Britain has had on offer, that uh, any of them are more likely than John McDonnell to get in charge at the Treasury and say, actually, shall we get rid of child poverty? I don't really. I don't think that Rachel Reeves is more likely to do that. And uh, and so thus, as somebody who, you know, I'm not a chair of the trust or whatever, I'm not on the board, but I would like to think I am against child poverty. 
yeah, I don't really see I mean, it as a good thing that uh, the right wing of the Labour Party are in control of it again. <laughs> Long story short. I to mean, be fair to Rachel <laughs> Reeves, like, I think she probably would be wanting to get rid of child poverty, but just through the mechanism of getting rid of children entirely. Yeah, eating them, <laughs> a modest proposal, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the uh, one of the amusing, another amusing thing is that uh, one of the, like, the reason why, initial reason why uh, Hugh Abbott isn't allowed to announce this policy of uh, benefits for sleeper forces is because of the spending implications. <laughs> yeah, Which is because literal the Treasury. Liz Kendall yeah. shit. Yeah. It's household budget, guys. Got to balance the books. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, never. Uh, I, I mean, th- this non ideological idea of uh, cra- cracking down on benefits claimants, never mind the fact that uh, almost every instance of means testing. Costs more money than it saves. Hmm, I wonder if yeah. there's any any sniff ideology here. Uh, yeah, definitely not. Yeah, well, he must think because he fucking he doesn't agree with that himself. So what is he just like this thing? I completely disagree with is ideology. Like, <laughs> no, it's like it's that it's that liberal thing. You know, you know the old phrase. Um, the the problems are bad, but the causes are really really good. In the <laughs> liberal mind, the problems are good as well because they get to bitch about them. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> very beneficial. Because he hasn't got any comedy ideas. He's in that sort of elder statesman period of his career where he's like, you know, he's doing some bullshit show about space that nobody watches. He's doing a stage adaptation of Doctor Strange Love, um, and he needs some kind of extra extracurricular activities to be getting on with. So of course, you know, you find a role on the board of a charity to do and so on um and so yeah it's very beneficial to ianucci at this this stage in his career to you know take an interest in these pressing social issues and 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 act as though he has no idea that these social issues are still around a large part because the media wants these things to the this to be the status quo right yeah i mean in, in again in the in this first episode uh they have uh Ollie Reader go and see his ex girlfriend who writes at the st- i think it's a standard initially and then later yeah the yeah yeah, um, yeah they say you have to do it because she's soft basically yeah and like as though he doesn't know that these these are the things that are going on you know like uh, so Ollie Reader gives gives his ex girlfriend at a newspaper a literal statement for her to print and he remarks <laughs> i have done the punctuation for you like, how, how do you look at that how do you look at that and go yeah it's weird that uh things are the way they are it's just completely impossible to understand why the treasury doesn't want to do this and that because of the fucking media environment that you are well aware of one thing i will say is that I mean, he probably does surround himself with like-minded individuals, but, like, Inucci doesn't write shows by himself. He's, like, an American-style no, TV showrunner. So, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe Jesse Armstrong or Tony Roach has a more clear-headed view of this kind of stuff, and they got some of that in there. I, um... I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be really cynical. I think they knew exactly what they were doing, and the, tr- the tellers and the fact he described it as, like, yes, minister... <laughs> Because Yes Minister, for those listeners who never watched it, was basically about normalising the idea that the civil service were incompetent and bloated and the, you know, were really blocking all the good things that could happen and they needed to be cut. That was the ideological purpose of it, that It was show, also it was written not... explicit by someone who was an explicit Thatcherite. Y- yes. Like Tony so, you know, Jay, I want to say. Like, it's a great fucking show. It's funny as all hell. But, like, between... Like, I, I genuinely think that, like, between Yes Minister and the thick of it, those two shows have done like an irreparable yeah. amount of damage to like the British conception yeah, of what, window. what the, government can yeah, be. Well, it's the it's the West Wing of British politics, except it follows a different mythos. In the United States, we use the West Wing as like, oh, you know, the nobility of politics, the president's a great man, all this kind of shit. Over here, it's about normalizing the shit. Yeah, it's more cock up and conspiracy, whatever and, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's basically saying, hey, you know, it's not it's not malice. They're just all incompetent. And uh, also, whilst they're at it, without even mentioning it in passing, they're normalising the idea that the press should be involved in politics in this way. Yeah. I think they knew exactly what we were doing, and it's because, uh, you know, Iannucci said that straight up Yes Minister was a great inspiration for yeah. it, and the man's clever enough to understand what that show was about. So, 
I think that's the ideological project. What he said specifically is that, yeah, yeah, he loves Yes Minister, but he wanted to bring it into the, well, what was then the modern day, in that he thought mm. that in the Thatcher period when they made Yes Minister, that kind of power was um, exerted in, that sort of unaccountable power was uh, exerted by the civil service. That was where that, that um, you know, power base was. He felt that that had then shifted to sort of unelected political political advisors in the mold of Alistair Campbell yeah, or Peter spads. Mandelson. Exactly, exactly. So that's why Malcolm becomes the central figure of the show. And I mean, I get it <laughs> and he's fucking right. I mean look at uh I mean Morgan Morgan McSweeney as well as uh, Luke Akehurst yes. who until <laughs> until recently has essentially been more a more or less unelected figure in uh you know, the Labour Party machinery, like some kind of fucking disgusting Phantom of the Opera type thing. Yeah, or Mike Katz. I think he's going to stay unelected. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> hope so. I would hope so. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you've got your, your Luke Akehurst, you've got your Morgan McSweeney's. Uh, I'm trying to think who else sort of fits that bill. Cummings on the Tory side. Not anymore, but yeah, <laughs> at uh, one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, now, that, now that Boris Johnson's out the spotlight and, you know, Brexit's scare quotes settled. I mean, but who was I, I'm trying? I, I've forgotten, but like um, Stuart Pearson, like the spin doctor that you get in season three, I want to say wow. he's explicitly based on Steve Hilton, who is now like a pro-Trump maniac yes. with like a show on Newsmax or something. That's crazy because he was like mm-hmm. you know the bastion of liberal conservatism, and then what do you know? He's just a conservative. I, <laughs> I can absolutely see the character of Stuart Pearson becoming a Trump guy in the in universe. You know? Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think of a good Stuart bit I watched earlier. Never mind. Continue. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we talk about the first episode a bit more? I mean, there's not not loads more really to it. Um, we've got so the ep- the sorry the policy uh, the Snooper Force policy is set to be announced. Uh, Malcolm makes Hugh. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, Can I just interrupt? Back. The bit I remember. Um, about Stuart was like it, I think it's a deleted scene from the third season and he's just like uh, uh, like Emma's talking about how her ma- her relationship with Ollie is like on the rocks and Stuart's just like saying about how relationships like mean nothing they're just bo- they're very transient and you, you go through them and he's like Bet- uh, I'm on my fo- I'm on my uh, third marriage and between you and me uh, the f- uh, ma- marriage 4G is already in development which is like the perfect i love it because it's like a lame a lame reference to like iphones and also like Stuart is apparently a massive shagger with a a level attitude to adultery (laughs) (laughs) sorry back to episode one uh... uh so Hugh has to roll back the so he's announced he's going to announce the policy at school um and is told in the car that he can't announce it and there's loads of two in like trying to figure out what to announce and essentially they end up announcing nothing <laughs> government business is continuing as usual yeah, uh, I, th- I think at some point they have like a discussion to be like, why don't we do it 3D style? Just summon all the journalists here and to say, ha, you see, there's nothing going on. This is just journalism. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, what the fuck are you guys? <laughs> like, I will say, I did find the cut where they're like, they're going up to the door and he's going to walk in and address the press and he just goes through the door. I mean, it cuts to him coming back through the door going, well, that was a fucking disaster. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. probably the funniest bit in the episode to me. And I think the later seasons suffer because they had the budget to actually do the presses, etc., rather than just do shit like that. Because mm, yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, I, the implication of the joke is funnier than actually playing it out. Yeah, mm. um, the fucking. I, I mean, you say that, but like the bit with fucking Peter Mannion talking to the classroom of kids is one of the best bits. Of oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the silicon playground. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking yeah, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> She is mine. When they're in the woman. back of the car, like they're trying to come up with, <laughs> they're trying to come up with a policy that they that they want to drop, and before they decide on fuck it, we'll just not drop one, and they come up with uh, fucking uh, everyone has to carry around a plastic bag. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Asbos <laughs> in the National Spare Room database. 
but then like all of these are in some form law now after yeah i was gonna say that's the bedroom text and the 5p plastic bag charge <laughs> which yeah. you know courtesy the, of the coalition the, no 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 the, well, the plastic bag one is um is if, if you've got a dog like you need to yeah. oh yeah 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 of course yeah, yeah. walk yeah. Mm-hmm. And There's then also, the um, pet asbos is also a thing that kind of happened to some degree as well. Well, they were talking about um, the Lib Dems, the Lib Dems investment bank thing was like they they, tra- they did it on the thick of it, and then a day, the next day, uh, the Lib Dems announced their investment bank policy in later seasons. Like For that happened sake. within twenty four hours. It was really. You know, it, it made the papers at the time because, like, oh, you know, I, I know she's just tuned in. And he was, like, going, I had no idea. We just picked a policy that sounded ridiculous and, lo and behold, the coalition's doing <laughs> He's it. He's so smug so, about that shit yeah. now. He's like, oh, they've copied all our ideas. Like, fuck off, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, good. They copied all the shit ideas. Well done. Yeah, which were in, in turn based yeah. on shit government policies anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that scene in the back of the car where they're trying to come up with them. Apparently, they just left the camera rolling on them, and they like the actors just come up with it. So Chris Addison is personally responsible for the existence of the bedroom tax. <laughs> I hear what Chris Addison. That's like the least of the things I hold Chris Addison responsible He's for. Such like, a great, you know, total like maybe Bronze oh Star God. in like the history's greatest monster challenge. You know, Gold oh Star Stephen Fry he, unbeatable, he, but. <laughs> He honestly <laughs> did one of the most obnoxious fucking tweets I've seen in my entire life the other day of uh, how he let rip a, a Tory canvasser at how this is... And it's oh, like, motherfucker, that, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Motherfucker, you are at least partially responsible for this shit, so you shut the fuck up, mate. Actually, I can do you one better. You know you, you know who had the, the, the first ever response to that disgusting Richard Osman tweet about, uh, you know, clowns to the left of me, jokes to the oh, right, yeah. sitting here waiting for a centrist party, you know, that gives me a warm cup of tea. First response... Was it your boy Tarantula Dick? Was Chris Addison? Yeah, it was. Got, yeah, I got into a feud <laughs> with Chris. Ad- it was like 2016, early uh, Corbyn Wars for me. Like G- getting in early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, and like sort of. I was. It was when I was still like, why are all these nice lefty celebrities being so mean about the left all the time? I was like confused, and I was like, <laughs> that's so weird, Chris. But you, why, why do you want like the people who you satirize so brilliantly to to take over the Labour Party again? Um, and he was like, it was a show, it's a comedy, it's not based, it's not like real life. I and mean, then you watch any interview of Ian Nucci and he's like, yeah, so the thing about the thick of it was, it was exactly like real life. And that's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm purposefully not doing a Scottish accent uh, for the, com- the Scottish comrades on the line here. Um, I don't, I'm- Jamie can fill in, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to uh, go over that bridge, so you'll have to just, uh, just like, so, um, adjust general kind of smug voice will just have to suffice for Ianucci quotes or paraphrases. <laughs> I did I did like uh going back to in the car. I did like how uh, so they have, so they have to come up with an idea that's vaguely positive and free. And uh Ollie Reader remarks our manifesto is made up of them. Uh which <laughs> I did enjoy I a penny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He also <laughs> floats bringing back capital punishment. <laughs> also, uh, <laughs> mentions Das Kapital, so they are aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. When, it's funny when they break, yeah, break not... that wall and they reference uh, like a real world political yeah, capital thing. Mention. Like Ollie's like, I'm just going to like have a shit and read Polly Toynbee or something. <laughs> they, they mentioned Diane Abbott later that on, which was weird. That, all yeah. sorts of strange that shouldn't have been in there because that, that did, uh, that like uh, fractured the reality of the show i think by bringing in a real labor politician and they never did that with any other like blair era labor politician someone who was actually in parliament in the period uh that they depict in the show it's like what was malcolm giving diane abbott bollockings that must have been horrifically fucking racist i mean he fucking would have been <laughs> i mean i think I th- that, that's like um that's one of the fucking 2012 episodes i think if i remember mm. rightly and uh it's possible they just forgot she was an MP because she was just on like daily politics yeah, by that yeah, point, that's wasn't true. she? Yeah, I was season three. Yeah, yeah, season three. <laughs> so um, they finish the bullshit press conference in the school, uh, and they uh, they go back to the office, and they they're all uh, celebrating. They all celebrate the fact that it was so boring that the media didn't report on it. <laughs> that's brilliant. That is Starmerism, isn't it? That's prescient. 
hell. Although the thing I found the thing the thing I didn't find particularly believable was the fact that uh, Angela Heaney, the uh, Ollie's ex, uh, actually gets very shitty with Ollie because uh, he's been giving her conflicting stories like this whole time. Uh, and her colleagues start uh, make fun of her by uh, printing out like a porno picture and saying that Angela Heaney swallows anything, which well, and attaching misogyny- it to a pair of flip flops because yeah, she kept yeah, going yeah. back and forth on her story. Just normal press stuff is fine. It was a different time. Yeah, but like the reason the reason I found that yeah the reason I found that unbelievable was because Angela Heaney gave gave him shit for it. Like that wouldn't fucking happen with uh, yeah, with the Labour yeah. right now. Like. Whew. But like, oh, this thing you told me today that's completely different to the thing you told me yesterday. Okay. Into the, into the <laughs> and all their colleagues goes. are just like, you're a great journalist. You're the best journalist ever, mate. Keep reporting the truth, mate. Like, <laughs> well, it's, the journalist wall of silence. I think, it, I think it feeds into the ideological kind of thing, which is that ideally journalists are there not to do this. They're there to serve a purpose and to serve the truth and the public trust. So we've got to at least have a fig leaf nod to that right up front, I think. In order to yeah. maintain, you know, mm. like there's a lot of there's a lot of inculcating the public in just accepting that this is how it is goes on in this show, and thus thus it ever was, and thus it ever will be. And I think having this nod to the fiction of journalism being to be about truth is kind of a necess- necessary part of that. So there's there's a couple instances where there's like some specific dickhead columnist that Malcolm Tucker's having it out with, and that's mm-hmm. causing a problem, and. That shouldn't be the case, but fuck you, it is. But the rest of the time, it's just straight up. Oh well, that's just what the press is. It's it's an unchangeable and unknowable force that just acts upon its own will. No, I mean, well, there's an episode with a Guido type blogger, isn't yeah. there? And yeah. Malcolm's got no respect for it for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that first episode. Like, I think the next thing that happens after they get back from the press conference where they announce nothing and nobody reported on it. Is that, like Malcolm tells them they have to actually announce the policy. So to just pretend they announced the policy, and when they bring up that like the press were there and know that he didn't, he's like, "Well, we'll just tell them that you did, and then they'll print that because if they don't, then they won't get access to us in the future." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but well, there's an episode later where like Nicola has just spilled some go- Nicola yeah, the, Murray, the, 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 Hugh the, Abbott's uh, uh, replacement, the scratchy to Chris Langham's uh, Poochie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly she's she's um that, that is very good but yeah she's like spilled some kind of secret to a journalist not angela heaney although i think she does reappear in the show um but uh anyway like i think it's because nicola has like a fear of uh lift. yeah she yeah. is claustrophobic so they're walking down the stairs and this this guardian scumbag is just noting down everything no, she she's walking behind she's her. walking down the stairs with the guardian journalists that she's just had lunch with and they're all off yeah. the record but they're being yeah. followed by a freelancer <laughs> who like overhears everything <laughs> that's it that's it yeah yeah and and then basically malcolm is just like he comes out with nicola who looks so happy that like she's actually got this bully boy sticking up for her for once and he's just like that conversation never happened you didn't you didn't uh you didn't hear that nicola did you say that she's like no i didn't i don't even know you <laughs> it's like that's a great example i think of uh yeah this kind of oh murta that we're talking about between the the politics and the press although yeah I usually mean, it doesn't even, have to be obtained through coercion in yeah that i mean that, even that the um the revolving door is also like something that sort of happens a little bit in the background because in the yeah. in the in season three and no in season four where it's the coalition years, so it's the Tories and the Lib Dems, like the the Lib, De- Lib Dem analog uh, of the Dosak minister is advised by Angela, who the guy who was Angela Heaney's boss at the Mail. Like it's just like, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, again, how yeah. do you, how <laughs> how do you write a show like this, uh, or become or be part of a show like this, and not see? the parallels like a guy who used to work for the the editor for the fucking mail working for the lib dems and like you you don't see ianucci's party by the way (laughs) but he's generally no he's probably labor now isn't he but he's generally he's probably a labor candidate at this point he um (laughs) he has a line as well where like he, he he does something like he handles something and some like and I think the the fucking junior minister comments that he did it well and he's like well that's what two years of doing press for N Power does for you. 
<laughs> so they really drive home that he's just moved around like various fucking high powered jobs. Yeah, it's like how the guy who uh, the poli- who is then the political editor of the Daily Mail, I believe, John Stevens, who with two junior journalists put together the hit piece on real politic in 2017. He's now the political editor of the Labour supporting Daily Mirror. Yeah, it's a personal example of what exactly what we're talking about here. A yeah. normal environment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, so. That, I mean, I think that's I think that's about it for the first episode. And like the th- the themes in that first episode, I think are broadly applicable at the at the very least for you know seasons one, two, and three. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh. Sorry, David got held up. No, keep rolling. I've got my notes. One take, and we're out. <clears throat> Hi. You're listening to a free episode of Podcasting's Praxis. But did you know that Kurosawa was 51 when Yojimbo was released? Widely hailed... Sorry, I'm related. But did you know that we also do premium episodes? That's right. Each month, the CIA was backing deaf squads in a... No, no. It's fine, we'll fix it in post. Each month, we post exclusive episodes on our Patreon which you can join at patreon.com forward slash praxiscast. Joining our Patreon also gets you access to our Discord, where you can find bonus clips and... unzip the optional physics files into your Skyrim data for... Hang on. Ah. Where there are bonus clips, and you can... Wait, David, it's fine. I'm nearly done. Season 4 is a bit a bit different, I think. Uh, still bro- obviously broadly similar, but... Uh... There's the sort of extra spin on it of uh, talking about the sort a bit more in depth of like the internal Labour Party machinery in that season. But before before we get there, Ooh. I do I do just want to remark on like so the numerous episodes between these two points, like essentially fundamentally with the same stroke of a brush, you know, painting these people as just completely unprincipled worm people. Like who will do literally anything, <laughs> yeah. in, and, like, and and like I do, I do feel like Glenn. By the way, is a bit of a Mary Sue for Iannucci, uh, because he described like describing. No. Uh, I, I mean, but no, no, but you, you, I, I have someone else in mind. But you go for it. Or just yeah, you know, he, he describes the Lib Dems as. Uh, so, so Glenn Cullen describes the Lib, Lib Dem standings as uh, being principled up until the point they went into coalition, which I thought. Uh, <laughs> Which I thought was amusing. Right. Uh, assuming it is like he is, he is a bit of the Mary Sue. No, I mean for me the Mary Sue is uh, Peter Mannion. It's Kent Clark. Because if of all the people who are shown with like the most sort of humanity, it's either Glenn, which I agree, or it's him. And I think it's him. I think yeah. he's the Mary Sue. Who, because he is what, you know, because liberals, and Iannucci is liberal, is the wet dream of all liberals, is the one good Tory. And he is, yeah, you yeah. know, mostly the one good Tory. Well, it's no coincidence that, you know, some dipshit spent years and probably still is running a Peter Mannion account on Twitter where they mm. post bullshit liberal opinions that are equally critical of Jeremy Corbyn and, you know, the recent leadership well, of the Conservative they had, Party. Um, they, at some point, I can't remember which one of the writers it was, but they had a deal with The Guardian and they wrote columns like in the voice of Malcolm for the 2015, I want to say, general election. That was, oh, I think that might have been Jesse Armstrong. Now yeah, the it was Jesse Armstrong. Yeah, yeah. successful creator of Succession. Yeah. <laughs> you know, de- definitely one of the more talented people to have been on, uh, you know, a fairly talented writing staff. Um, I- I'll give that to him. But yeah, I thought those columns were shite. It didn't, they it were didn't translate atrocious. at all without, no. um, mm. without uh, Peter Capaldi's brilliant performance. Mm. Yeah. Um, so but the... On, on the on the subject of Glenn being one of the more human people, uh, uh, human characters in the show, you know, he really is like the median Labour guy, just kind of a wishy washy, nice but kind of a dipshit. Like, I mean, no he, just, real he, he describes that he describes that uh, investment bank as the type of thing we should be doing. You know, like an essentially nothing yeah. policy. There you go. Yeah, he's yeah. just, he's like, um, you know, to, to uh, mention another Iannucci collaborator, he's like the nice Labour moderate 
that uh, Michael Palin plays in Alan Bleasdale's GBH, who mm. spends this miniseries getting terrorised by hard-left militant thugs. Um, he's just like that kind of guy. You know, he, his heart might be in the right place. He's not that good a guy, yeah. really. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he's fundamentally just a bit of a sap. Of course he would join the Lib Dems because he thought Labour got a bit mean. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly the kind of thing that but, that kind of guy would do. But he'd have rejoined Labour by now and would be dutifully yeah. supporting Starmer. But what I find interesting, like about the the thick of it, as opposed to yes, minister, because it's like the sort of the question of like where does power lie in this show? Because in the in in mm -hmm. in yes, minister, it's quite clear, like the hapless minister, and it's the, the the true power of of government or the power in the show to change or as you will, if you will, not change things is in the civil service. You know, there are literal like mm. smoke filled rooms where like all the directors general, you know, Sir Humphrey hangs out with his superior, and you know they make the real decisions. Um, but in in the in the thick of it, you are like you sort of. Clearly, it's not in the ministerial office because, like, the ministers are suckers. And it's like, is it? It's also, it doesn't really seem to be the press because, like, for the most part, for most of the seasons, it you could you you see that Malcolm is just basically effortlessly able to like corral the press into doing whatever the fuck he thinks they should be doing. And it's like, yeah, it's spads. It, it, That's it. It's made for spads. Is it is yeah, but is it really though? Because like that's what from... he's that's what he says himself. I don't know. I, Maybe he I think he's do. I think he's wrong. I'm, I'm with Rob on this. I think what it's actually showing you is that look, the reason nothing ever changes and nothing happens is no one has power. Really, it's, like it's not that no one office. has power. It's not. It's close to that. It's that the power is just off screen, laughing. <laughs> you never see anyone actually like in charge. You you never see anyone actually like taking full ownership of something. Everyone's reacting to something mm -hmm. else. Anytime someone does say, like, oh, we're going to launch a policy, it just unleashes this, like, cataclysm of fucking errors, which, like, yeah, fair enough, that's that's the whole point, like, it's supposed to be that, but at no point does anyone seem to be, like, confidently taking leadership of anything. Um, even Tucker, like, is just... He's just an enforcer, like... Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's exactly that. I'm yeah, a he's husk. An <laughs> Malcolm died years ago, <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I think like you could you could make some sort of case by saying the power lies in the one person you never ever see during any of these seasons. That's the prime minister, because that's always just a yeah, figure somewhere off in the difference. Or like that's, you know, Malcolm always says, "I've come from that, number no. 10. But they you know, like the first episode of all by showing the uh, you know. The not Tony Blair and not Gordon Brown are in like you know daggers drawn like um they can't get anything done because the treasury will take it as a coup d'état kind of thing yeah like yeah. I think it's very much the idea that no one can exercise power yeah. that's just how the system is I honestly think that's whether it's consciously intended or not it's the propaganda aim of it like it's why yeah. it works so well yeah nothing can be done as the kind of like core thesis <laughs> of what, what yeah. is to be done yeah. absolutely nothing well yeah, yeah, I mean <laughs> like. Malcolm's whole thing is that, like, um, you know, because he spends, like, from the specials, it, uh, like, between season or series two and three, from the specials onwards, he, like, his main job is, like, fucking knifing various, like, leaders of the party and trying to put new ones in yeah. and stuff. And he yeah. explains that as, like, his loyalty is to the party. And he actually says at one point that you can't help people if you're if you're in opposition. You, they need to, like, he needs to knife people so that <laughs> the, the party can win an election. And it's, like, yeah. that just sort of thing where it's, like, just the, the team sports element of it is, like... He says himself, he's lost his fucking soul. All there is is the job. It's just the job. We do this. I fuck this guy over. I fuck this guy over. I fuck another guy over. We get elected. It's just, like, he's just... He's going through the motions. In the words of Glenn, like a shark or Bob Dylan he's just got to keep <laughs> moving and that and that and he's basically just like well if I just keep moving it sooner or later we'll be in power and then I don't know what socialism happens he's probably Malcolm the character has probably excised socialism uh, from his vocabulary by this point I think if he ever uh, you tended to use it regularly look if if if, if the thick of it had been set in uh, like post Cold War Russia then Tucker would have been part of the KGB. 
Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, like just in terms of like where the power's concentrated, Ianucci found just like he had to update it by shifting it at least uh, his, in his intention from uh, the civil service to the spads. Um, when he went to make Veep in America, he found that he again had to shift where the power was concentrated because, quite simply, in America. You can't have a Malcolm Tucker character because they would be out on their ass if they ever fucking spoke to an elected politician like uh, Malcolm <laughs> does in every single scene he's ever in. So <laughs> instead, he had to just make everyone a vicious, horrible cunt, which was kind of brilliant, actually. And it's one of the reasons I uh, possibly like the more than the thick of it. <laughs> you know, it's got uh, it's got a lot of uh, star players. I think one of the things that happens with with Malcolm over the seasons is like, you know how um, uh, I can't remember the, the creators off the top of my head, but like both the creators of The Sopranos and Breaking Bad, like oh, right. were were really David like they, Chase and Vince Gilligan, yeah, Vince yeah. Gilligan yeah. Breaking but Bad. they both like did, said many times in different interviews that they really did not like it how much like. Um, the public started to perceive, um, you know, Tony Soprano and Walter White as as like anti heroes, but the heroes hero. that the they hero, would, yeah. That, yeah, 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 not even the anti hero, but just just the like the straight up hero. And I think one of the things that all happens... of us can relate to when our bitch wife doesn't let us cook meth. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what are the meh. what are the things that like I think happens over over the course of the seasons and during the specials is that. I think it's partly because clearly, like, the public likes Malcolm so much. And again, you have that sort of anti-hero thing. But I think Iannucci and the writing staff, instead of, like, trying to sort of pull back and show that, no, Malcolm is actually, like, he is a fucking monster. Like, in any good society, you shouldn't need him. He They make him more of the hero. And I think part of the problem with, like, certainly the last two seasons, when you have this sort of downfall arc of Malcolm, is it's, like, it's almost portrayed as, like, a like a tragic decline. Because he, yeah. he becomes yeah, a much more of an actual <laughs> hero than, like, an anti-hero. Yeah, well, I, guess, like, I guess you, know, you got gets... Steve Fleming as well, who could not be a more detestable counterpart mm. to him. You're like, oh my god, he's the new Malcolm, fuck. <laughs> should we, should we briefly like... introduce uh, the, so in the, some of the characters from the later seasons? I think I think it'd yeah, probably go be a good idea at this point. So, uh, in the later seasons, we're introduced to uh, the opposition and then later the government. Uh, who consists of Peter Mannion MP uh, and his um, his spads, uh, Phil and I've forgotten Emma. Emma, Emma. yeah, Emma, mm-hmm. Emma Messenger, who is also Ollie's girlfriend for a time. Uh, which what, what a g- Guardian can- columnist ass name, by the way, Emma <laughs> Messenger. It's like can I, Ame- can Amelia I Gentleman well. or whatever. <laughs> can I just say, Phil is a fucking incredible creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Just absolutely, absolutely fucking like played by Will Smith before he disgraced yeah. himself with his violent acts. <laughs> but you know they, they've like they've honed in on a very specific type of guy that you see a lot on the internet and just bombed him from the fucking air repeatedly. And I love it. Like, I'm very here for it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, one hundred percent posts on the Eve Online forums. <laughs> yeah, you also like they exist in real life too. I fucking visit. You'll like this, David. I knew one guy like him at fucking Glasgow University, who was unbearable and went to a Glasgow Check University out. Union. And like, <laughs> they, they, it's just down to a T. Just absolutely mannerisms, accent, every fucking thing about him. It's like honestly quite scary. When I first saw him, I did a double take and had to double check that this wasn't like you know in any way, shape, or form. They couldn't possibly have just taken this guy, but no, there's just, <laughs> yeah. just so many of them. Yeah. His his full name, at least according to the Wikipedia, by the way, is and like it matches so well with the rest of his character is Philip Bartholomew Cornelius Smith. Yeah, <laughs> which is fantastic. Like as so well cast as all because he just. Smith. He looks. He genuinely yeah, looks like, like I don't know name. what the male equivalent is, but like he looks like a like a like a horse girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Emma gets called a horse girl in the show, doesn't yeah. she? A horse mm-hmm. fucker, something like that. <laughs> I think mm-hmm. horse girl is a more. I think someone accuses convention. her of torturing horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I've just seen a line in my notes that I, I remarked on with, with when Glenn says, "This is the most shocking thing I've seen in politics since the SDP." <laughs> <laughs> and then he fucking joins them basically yeah. what, what a yeah. tragic character 
Um, I think oh, actually there is tragic. a there is another character that's worth uh, uh, talking about, and that is Dan Miliband. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean Dan oh, Miller. Oh yeah, yeah, Dan Miller. <laughs> the the, the forgotten the forgotten Miliband. Uh, yeah, the, war, not so much the prince who was promised, but the prince you actually see on scene. <laughs> yeah, the prince who who actually uh, does not have to go across the water because he does become leader. Yes, it's as. <laughs> Oh, we, we wish it was so. Uh, also not. played <laughs> incredibly well, by the way, as just this fucking smooth cunt. Yes, like, this, like, like the, the uh, fact that... Yeah, the, the, what do they say? Brush, brushed aluminium cyber yeah. thick. Uh, yeah, I think they was... tried to make Dan Jarvis, the new Dan Miller, over here for a bit. Didn't didn't take on, did it? No. I don't remember him. Remember Dan yeah. Jarvis? Yeah, talking about Dan Jarvis, Marine J. <laughs> <laughs> Justice for him. Isn't he still mayor of something somewhere, or is it the other country yeah, who has like is. the big PR agency? It's it's definitely him. But so basically, he was going to have to step down from Parliament. This was like 2018, 19 to become the mayor of whatever is it, Sheffield? I, I, I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. Um, anyway, he threw a massive tantrum, and so did all his right wing mates in the PLP. And Corbyn was like, "Oh fucking hell, fine, you can stay as an MP then." <laughs> it's just a, <laughs> a classic example of just how we could have purged a cunt, but Corbyn was like, you know. Uh, he decided not to, unfortunately. Much as I love mm-hmm. the man, too many of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I think season four in general is worth talking about because, especially in light of the Corbyn years, because we have, as as we've sort of previously mentioned, uh, a Labour leader being being knifed uh, by its own party. Um, the media uh, be working hand in glove with those same backstabbers um, and then a very interesting sort of uh, crescendo if you like in the inquiry which is the which is a double bill episode uh, but it's yeah, the p- a penultimate and, episode in the running order and it drags to fuck like <laughs> <laughs> the deep one is yeah. much better they could have easily fit that into half an hour. I, I think the Veep one might have been half an hour. Like, that was a great episode. Like, honestly, if you want to check that out, it's much funnier. <laughs> my, um, <laughs> my main thing with the fucking uh, the Inquiry episode, I mean, it was directed like absolute dog shit for a start. Like, Yeah. But, I think, um, I think the main it was thing going was... for a very similitude with watching an yeah. actual fucking Inquiry, yeah. to be fair. But, that's that's um, our excuse in real politic as well. We're going for verisimilitude. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the bit, where, the bit where Malcolm trips himself up by, like, yeah. bringing up the fucking uh, the thing he did to get, like, the quiet back people notes exposed to the yeah, press. Holding yes. his and then note they, out on the outside so people could take pictures and of it. When they blow up the photograph to include, because he says he was cropped out of the photograph and when they get the blown up version, it you can see that he was like carrying a fucking folder with like the guy's uh, NHS number and stuff on. And it's like, so right, so you know, we, he's like... We should probably sort of outline why the inquiry is happening. Yeah. Well, I mean, we kind of think, like, go on. But the thing, I, the point I was going to make was they show they show this like thing of him like fucking tying his own noose, and then the the one of the judges on the on the inquiry go like basically fucking explains like, haven't you just tied your own noose here? Because yeah, we wouldn't yeah. have looked at this if you and it's like Jesus fucking Christ, like, do you know what I mean? Not a lot of faith in the fucking audience by that yeah. point. It's quite a funny bit in that where he, like, Malcolm very clearly plants a bunch of smear stories in the press about one of the people on the committee, and she's just absent. (laughs) She has to absent herself for one day. So uh, the the reason why this this hour-long episode happened is because in the episodes leading up to uh, this one, there is a... It's a, a nurse who... The, yeah, the political is plan is, which I can't remember who sets it in motion or if it's both sides who sort of cooperated on it over like the, te- the various reigns of the various the Tories, parties. But 
you know. So the the way this works is there's there's a policy floated by the Labour Party when they're still in power, but they never go ahead with it, as saying like, why don't we, to make some money, sell off a bunch of NHS key worker housing? But they don't go ahead with it, and then when the government com- when the Tory government comes in in coalition with the Lib Dems. They then actually do the policy. Yeah, they take the reason to make some money because quasi extra other universe, Gordon Brown sold all the whatever they use as puns. Yeah, the um the reason that Labour don't go ahead with it is because uh, Nicola Murray's husband was involved in like a PFI. Deal yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love all the I love all the corruption uh, with her husband, the PFI corruption. It's like Malcolm Tucker's like PFI, which I think stands for pretty fucking embarrassing. If you're a bit sloppy <laughs> around the details, which your fucking husband is, or something. <laughs> yeah, selling selling off key worker housing to cover PFI debt. I mean, that is that is mm-hmm. a fucking mm. neoliberal ass policy if I've ever heard one. Like, goddamn. <laughs> So like uh, we've got so there's there's uh, one of the one of the affected nurses uh, decides to stage a one man protest by living in a tent. I think is it on the premises of where these are some key worker housing is going to be knocked down um, or it's, it'll be sold yeah. off. Sorry, um, and eventually ends up uh, dying by suicide, which obviously is you know a very sad thing to ever happen. But like if this is this is it's a bit jarring considering this is it's one the death. first time it's the first time the show analyzes the outcome of the neoliberal policies it mm. keeps flowing. yeah mm. if one if one if one yeah i mean yeah it's the short short-sightedness of the liberal mindset it's considering also... this is an inquiry that is as as the result essentially of one person dying uh in this show versus the what three hundred thousand, i think Ish. it was a, a last count that died as a yeah, result of austerity. Yeah, it's a tragic therapy. personalized story. It's not the sweeping scale yeah. of uh, state yeah. violence it, in reality. It's also worth pointing out that they had him. They had him commit suicide as well, rather than have mm. it be like a, a consequence for which there was a more direct line. They they left the out in that. Well, I mean, he chose to do it, right? Which just tells you like a lot of liberal mindset. The one consequence they have from their policies is someone who decided to do themselves in. Rather than the, like you say, hundreds of thousands who were done in by them, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that this isn't me saying that anyone who does take their own life is weak or whatever. That's not it at all. I'm just saying that it's interesting to me that this is the example they pick and they make yeah, a big because, fuss out of in the end. Yeah, because that that's an individual choice that that this guy made. It's not like he fucking froze to death because mm-hmm. his house was sold off. Or, or starved to death because his benefits or, were cut, or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, there's there's a million and one fucking ways that it does fucking happen, thanks to what we've had. Yeah. And yeah, bleak. so go on. No, that is it. Just bleak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, we get as a as a result of uh, of uh, Mister Tickell, uh, Mister Tickell's suicide, we have an. Ultimately, an inquiry after um, the, through a, through a series of events, Nicola is Nicola Murray is uh, kicked out as yeah. Labour leader, the, and Dan Miller is installed. Yeah, um, the, the the inquiry isn't so much technically about like why did this man die. The inquiry is about the fact that his medical records are leaked to the leaked, press, yeah. and the inquiry is yeah. essentially like broadly speaking is like it's almost How like the, the government Leveson works. inquiry <laughs> no but yeah, it's almost like the Leveson leaking. inquiry if there was like a part two or a, like part two is supposed to be the relationship between the 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 police and the press and like you could have seen this as part three between you know the political establishment and the journalists and like you know who leaked mm. this this medical data mm. and that's and then you know and then through a series of mishaps it explodes into an inquiry into the entire culture of leaking through our government mm. yeah well, i'm sure is... starmer's gonna do Leviton two and three first day in office oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> his secret radical agenda that there is so much historical precedent for yeah but i do i do find the inquiry in general quite sad i suppose and not just because of the 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 directorial choices because (laughs) this is ultimately like this is you know this is what 
this is what liberals want, right? They want the uh, the institutions of our liberal democracy to come down and say, this is the bad man. And this, at least yeah. that's my reading of it. And ultimately, um, <laughs> Malcolm Tucker well, I is wish... hounded out of his position if... and arrested. I wish if that could happen, it would be fucking Alistair Campbell, though. I mean, we've had a few bad men hounded out. Boris Johnson, Jeremy Corbyn, terrible <laughs> men who have the same politics <laughs> in every way. Like, But, like, you know, could the guy who Malcolm Tucker is based on not be one of them? Like, could... Al- could, could I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't believe that Armando Inucci has been on the rest as politics. I'm aware to. Um, I, I'm happy to stand corrected if he has like hung out with Alistair Campbell at points. He definitely defended him when he was uh, suspended from the Labour Party for voting Lib Dem in 2019. I'm like entirely he... convinced that those two hang out in like the same appalling dinner par- party circuit as everybody else. At Eddie Marson's house, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no yeah. anti-Semitism, <laughs> no moral certainty. Forget your common pubs and all that muck. Uh, but yeah, like, oh, sorry, I lost my thread. Let's carry on. <laughs> um, now, who are we talking about being at the dinner party with Iannucci? I completely had, like, a stone of mind blank. <laughs> Campbell. Oh, Campbell. Yeah, 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 that's it. Have, have any of you seen that video of uh, Mark Kermode watching yeah, In yeah. The Loop with Alistair Campbell? Classic video, like a real time capsule. And um, uh, I gotta say, um, uh, Alistair Campbell does not seem to find it funny. He's like, it's no, a he's, dumb he's very much like, no, no, he's like not taking it, basically. Yeah, he's pissed off about that, especially because that film is, it's not just about him being a bully in Westminster, it's about him creating the pretext for an illegal war, which again, you know, <laughs> you can really see why Armando defended this guy's right to be in the Labour Party, this this good man who defended, uh, who cre- created a false pretext uh, on an international stage for an illegal war. Was he not even, uh, did he not even enjoy um, James Gandolfini's performance? Uh, he, yeah, he may have liked that. I think he said, oh, the cast are very good, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, no, he's like, Kermode asked him, like, what's the most sweary thing you ever said to someone? And he's like, very smugly, like, I think I told someone to fuck the fuck off. I was like, that is a line in the show, actually. Uh, Come the, the fuck, fuck in off, or fuck but... the fuck off. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, I, I mean, but... uh, it, is, it is a really good and like, like entertaining TV show, especially, like, particularly if you're. Like if you've not seen it before, um, and even if you have, there are bits that you're gonna or like, you know, it's the kind of thing that you can watch several times, and there will be stuff that you've missed it, missed every previous time, you know, um, mm. and it, <laughs> and it just just comes back to your fucking tweet, Jack. <laughs> it's it's a shame <laughs> it's made by this guy that I fucking despise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, what what a shame. <laughs> but. I mean, there's a, like there's Coogan's a, there's a... all right, so I, I I can enjoy Alan Partridge fine because Steve Coogan like yeah, did a Steve video about Coogan's how Corbin's yeah. actually nice. <laughs> you know, I, I do I do also like though in uh, in that uh, in the inquiry episode when they've got Ollie Reader talking about what happens if you reveal the wrong info, and essentially mm. the Labour right will knife you for any or no reason. I yeah, so one yeah. thing just I because we'll, we'll wrap this up shortly, but um, one thing I do want to kind of talk about a bit more in more detail, at least anyway, is the way that they handle the internal not Labour Party ousting of Nicola Murray as leader. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I mean, that this was was it 2012 that last 2012, season? yeah, so it's the height of the um coalition. Yeah, so like you know, we're well before Corbyn even fucking being a potential fucking leader of the party. None of that was foreseeable in the slightest. And obviously, uh, the, the while you're while you're on that, though, I want to mm-hmm. mention the Socialist Campaign Group does get a fucking oblique like mention in uh, one of the specials. I think really, yeah. There's a guy says like because there's there's this you know, the second special where they're like, who's going to stand as leader? Oh mm-hmm. yeah. That- oh. An, well, an that, episode where literally nothing happens. It's quite impressive. 
Well, that was about the handover from Blair to Brown. So that yeah. was when both yeah, John yeah. McDonnell and Michael Meacher were running rival leadership campaigns that not, neither of them got on the ballot. Um, but so the, that was definitely one of the more visible times for the SCG. Someone, some one of the one of the leader. like potential candidates does say they're only standing to start a debate within the party. Oh, which yeah, is the, uh, yeah. McDonald's. the SCG line, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah is that the one that uh, Glenn backs? Oh, man, there's so house. many. Yeah. Is that the guy with the small head? Or they call it the same. <laughs> Jeff Holst. Jeff Holst. <laughs> yeah. Is that him? Tiny fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, he's got a massive head. <laughs> Mr. Baby yeah, New Potato Head. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know what we haven't mentioned? We haven't mentioned Jamie. We didn't yeah, mention well, Jamie at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's well, true. Because he, he gets like, disappeared. Yeah, well, the, without the actor who plays him even being a guy whose convictions you can easily Google. He just gets, like, reshuffled <laughs> to shit, basically. He's a spad, so it's not reshuffling, but he backs the wrong leadership candidate and he's fucking out. He's fucked. And, of course, that's not really how it works anymore. Like, all the people currently powerful in the Labour Party have backed spectacular failures of leadership campaigns like morgan mcsweeney ran liz kendall's campaign and is now you know <laughs> according to the new statesman more influential on the broad left than starmer himself um but uh, and there's another bit that's like that in the fourth season that that i think isn't quite true in terms of how actually malleable things are in the labor party and politics more general which is like uh, uh, how malleable loyalties are i should say which is like um when Glenn defects to the Lib Dems and then he tries to come back to Labour and Malcolm is like, you fucking traitor, fuck off. Yeah. Um, that's not the attitude to Angela Smith, Luciana Berger, the numerous people who left no. the Labour Party to um, run I mean, for the Lib Dems. I mean, Alistair Campbell himself fact. literally Alistair voted Lib Alistair Campbell Dem. himself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that kind of uh, tribalism uh, seemed kind of out of date by uh, See, well, you know, 2019. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things. I think that that kind of tribalism... I don't think that the... Um, the pushback on these people rejoining the party wouldn't be there if not for the drastically extenuating circumstances of one Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah, an because, act of God. Yeah, that, that was like a, a, a once-in-a-lifetime existential crisis for the Labour Party. Yeah. So like, but, yeah. it's different if they fuck off to join like the yellow team when you are the <laughs> red team, but when, when the red team is plagued with like, you know, red menace syndrome or whatever then it's a totally different game. But yeah. that's like, that goes back to what I wanted to kind of talk about as well. Like the way that Murray's ousted, it's all it's all obviously very fucking simplified in the way it works. Like the leader of the opposition office appears to be the leader of the opposition in two spads. Like yeah, it's not yeah. a very built up fucking operation. And fair enough, I get <laughs> it's why. It's basically what Corbyn's run... was like for like the first year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They basically run the civil service in such a way in this that it is just like a, there's some extras in the background that sit near computers and occasionally one of them gets shouted at or fired, but they don't do anything because nothing actually happens. Um But it was all very like top down and well managed and you know, there was a, a clear succession plan and all that in place. None of it was the panicky, fucked up uh, shit show that, that the actual ousting of Jeremy Corbyn was because that was yeah. a, a long and drawn out campaign. Yeah, I mean, oh, this is so many attempts. The stupidest fucking people. <laughs> Sorry. Don't you remember the whole scene where they had the entire cabinet go around and tell her how much she sucked? I'm sure that was yeah. in it. Uh, maybe it yeah, was in the and how he, how he needs to support <laughs> any kind of military action by Israel automatically. <laughs> I, do, yeah. I, do, I do also want to touch on the one thing, uh, now that you've mentioned Israel, that, that there are so many like little jabs at Israel throughout this yeah. throughout this show. Yeah, because this was like, liberal received wisdom until yeah. you had to pretend they were a nice liberal democracy to fucking spite the left. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's, it's oh, fascinating. But... It's like, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, hold on, let me just scour my tome of notes. I mean, Nicola Murray herself refers to um, the reaction to uh, the by-election as an Israeli-style response, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> and this is in season yeah. three. So this is pre, like, this is what two thousand and 
nine nine yeah. yeah well that was you know and well the sort of you know mainstream people like that was around 2010 when david cameron described gaza as an open-air prison 2014 labor under ed miliband recognized palestine as a state public opinion was moving against israel and unfortunately it took a major setback that i think now has you know gone against israel again with their um, conspicuous war crimes like um b- because like a load of uh you know quote-unquote nice liberals decided that they would basically back this fascist state to stop socialism happening in this country and um, and that's a simplification obviously there are very ide- pro very yeah, some people who do it the other way around people yeah 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 that's true there are pe- people who uh wanted to uh they were prepared for socialism to be fucked if they got Israel, uh, if Israel, uh, it became harder to criticize Israel, found, um, you know, happy soulmates in people who uh, were happy um, for like, uh, you know, it become harder to criticize Israel if socialism got fucked, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess like, it's interesting that this was in the Miliband era of a whole Nicola Murray storyline. It wasn't a, re- a reaction to Corbyn because it was also a kind of liberal wet dream that like, oh, can we not get rid of this shit incompetent Labour leader and put in a nice uh, Dan Miller character in, you know, the, the David Miliband years as well. It was like the party's gone mad and made this terrible mistake. Uh, we need to reverse that. We need to basically do what uh, happened in the Conservative Party, where Liz Truss beat Rishi Sunak. Liz Truss was obviously shit, and so they just were like, oh, forget that happened, and put Sunak in, um, which worked out. Just the most... Which is incredibly probably the most rankly undemocratic thing that has happened in either the Labour or Tory party in terms of internal internal party politics, internal party democracy, rather. (laughs) And and like the whole Labour establishment fucking desperately wishes they could done could have done that with both Corbyn and Ed Miliband. Yeah, it's it's the competence of it all that really fucking reeks. Like it's such a a, a smooth tactical operation. Get rid of your leader in like three easy fucking steps. Like <laughs> it, it's so fucking ridiculous to like compare this to like what's actually fucking happened because. This is like one of the rare examples where the show is stupider than the actual act. Well, it's well, it's, the, I mean. it's the it's because of the Juliet Jakes article, right? Like Jeremy Corbyn <laughs> unmasked all of unmasked all of comedy. Yeah. But this 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 episode this sorry this season season four couldn't have happened after Jeremy Corbyn was made leader. Like not least because. Um, Nicola Murray and like, well I mean everyone in in the show is basically painted as like I said earlier like un- unprincipled worm people and like the polar opposite of that of like you know I will I will bend my policies and whatever to whatever the Daily Mail wants and the polar opposite of that is Jeremy Corbyn uh, you, mm-hmm. you and, and as we saw it took four years and two elections to really unpick that uh, that elect- that uh, coalition of, of the electorate yeah, but how long do you reckon before, like, Iannucci writes a fucking new season of this that covers a Jeremy Corbyn-style left-wing opposition leader? Well, well there was... I, I'm, I'm not sure, but, like, there was a, a, a rumour for quite a while that he was going to write, um, like, a TV show about being cancelled uh, with, like, the main character, someone <laughs> who was being cancelled, which... You know, has come true, but it's in the form of Hugh Bonifil and written by Stephen Moffat. It's just come out. Right. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. That's and grim. there's not a fucking power on this earth that will make me watch that, so everyone can shut the fuck up on the Discord <laughs> yeah. about it. <laughs> well, I, Iannucci oh. says bum, he bum, says bum, himself bum. he seems kind of like artistically paralyzed. Like he can't. Um, that that's probably an. Uh, an impolitic expression <laughs> but like he he doesn't seem to be able to uh engage with the modern world satirically and he says himself you know it's like oh it's stranger than fiction it's it's too strange it's like well you know just make stuff that's kind of like based on real events then i guess like um i, I don't i yeah, don't know it's a it's, a, it's an it's abdication because there's a resurgent left uh, but, like, yeah 
Well, yeah. is, it's is why it's right why now? like the same fucking mm. liberal comedians constantly bang on about how like oh well social media was better before the plebs got on. Do you know what I mean? Like it was better when it was like a dinner party for me and my fucking twelve cunt mates. Mm. You know what I mean? It's because nowadays, like if you go like you know you go on for all the kids are always on their fucking TikToks and all this shit. But it's like you go on TikTok and there's plenty of people on like. Loads of people on there who just think communism's good, actually, and we should maybe try it since everything else is like just led down a big fucking like slope into a river of shit. You know what mm. I mean? Like everyone, like there's loads of people on Twitter who are just like can see that everything's come apart now. Do you know what I mean? Like, and largely because we had like a left wing alternative. I yeah. think you'll find and- it's because China owns TikTok or something. Yeah, yeah. It's because the Hamas AI factories yeah. are generating all these wonderful <laughs> memes. You can't just like carry on with the. That's the thing that fueled like fucking satire for so long was that like it's like well it's okay to just sort of stand, like that. It's the thing where like you know like you say politicians really like this show. Politicians really like spit the original spit and image. Like it was, it was considered a fucking like point of pride for the spit and image. Yeah, to make whereas a nobody about likes you. a new spitting fucking image. <laughs> nah. but, um, well, there's one man who like, really likes the puppets, but yeah. what are you talking about? I love the, the the sketch that was just like Jess Phillips like suck on my tits or whatever. <laughs> you know? My oh, big labour milkers, I think, was the quote. Christ, yeah. Christ. Christ. But like, um, you know, it's like it's it was fine when there was no alternative when when you could just stand up and just do minimum effort. E, those politicians there, they're all the same. Look at how bad they all are. I like, mm. you know what I mean? I'm the person here to tell you. How bad they are! Aren't you? Aren't you proud? Aren't you pleased to have a voice? Have someone powerful on TV who says what you're all thinking? Yeah. But like now, people aren't thinking that because people have seen that it is possible to have an alternative. And also, critically, what fucking happens? What these people do when there is yeah. an alternative? And yeah. so you can't go back to that now. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, I think partially, like a, a, apart from that, it's also like it's very material. It's like. Not that things, mind you, I'm not saying everything was great in 2012 because that's the provenance of the worst people on this fucking planet, but, like, <laughs> you you could sort of pretend for a while that, like, you know, even when austerity started to bite, that, like, at least for, like, you know, the middle classes, qua qua, the, you know, things were sort of okay and ticking along, and, like, the full horrors and, and like, effects of austerity hadn't shown themselves to them yet. Whereas I think, I think yeah. like, now in an age where, you know, I mean, we talk at every about it every week on the fucking podcast but like the nhs the shit in the waters the 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 everything like everything is just like ground down to such an extent that like making this comedy isn't fun for the middle classes anymore either because they too have worked out that they're not actually protected by these people or people like them portrayed for comedy on the television anymore yeah well that's the thing it's um, like you know if ian uchi wants a bit of fucking free advice don't bring back the thick of it while Starmer's in government because, like, <laughs> as nothing will improve, including for the fucking middle classes, like, they're not going to enjoy it. This time around, they will think it's shit, <laughs> so don't do it. Yeah, but, like, 15, 20 years ago, you could stand up and you could go, like, the politicians, they're just so worthless, aren't they? And people would go, yeah, that's right, you should, like, you know, uh, fucking yeah. useless a lot of them. Do you know what I mean? But if you stand up now and you go, like, you, you did this show and you went, like, look, politicians, fucking useless, aren't they? Like, a not insignificant number of people would probably just be like, you know, you're right, the world is ending, we should start yeah. Or, or, or ulti- alternately, a lot of people would just go, what are you talking about? Kia's nice, he's a nice man, he's a normal man. Why are you betraying politicians like this? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Because fundamentally, he can't move on artistically because that requires accepting that the world has moved on and he and a lot of others put a lot of effort into making sure that it didn't. So the mm. cost of him producing good art again is admitting that his ideological project was misconceived. I think some of the start. stuff that he's done since also like really shows that. Like I haven't looked at his full list of works, but like two of the things, well, three of the things that spring to mind. But one is I think an artistic leap, like a bound forward actually is like. But one of the one of the like two of the things he did was like he did that David Copperfield thing with Dev Patel. Mm. And it's just like, that's just retreating into the British canon because you have nothing new to say. She just do fucking yeah. Dickens again. And I despise Dickens. So that's like a whole, but that's a whole different kettle of fish. <laughs> um, and the other thing he did was that fucking, I can't even remember what it was called. But it was like 
the third of the exact same series of like a comedy set in in a space cruise liner with Hugh Laurie. Yeah, and no, I, I, Avenue Five. Avenue so I, Five. I, so yeah. earlier yeah. on, I was doing my deep research and I watched a bit of the Intelligent Squared uh, oh, Amanda yeah. Nucci <laughs> in conversation <laughs> with Helen Lewis event on YouTube. Uh, two of my favorite people. <laughs> uh, Helen Lewis is being like groomed to replace Ian Hislop at Private Eye, by the way. That's uh, oh, so God. you're going to see a lot more oh. of her in oh, the future. Hopefully, hopefully on Have I Got News for you as well oh i'm sure she'll be <laughs> casting a, a wry satirical eye on britain for from all sorts of media um but yeah basically but she said she was introducing him and she mentioned that he had worked on avenue q uh the show is actually called avenue five but ianucci uh clearly didn't even remember so, so this show left such little an impression <laughs> of people but its own fucking creator didn't even remember the name and he didn't bother to create correct her. <laughs> um, and and it's true. I do always just think, oh, Avenue Q. It's like, why did you give it such a similar name to a pre-existing property? Surprised you didn't get sued. And also, it wasn't like just... it wasn't even like the first like spaceship set comedy in that era because there was also the no. Seth something or other. I can't remember the fucking name, but There's there was one like with Steve Carell, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there were two or three with the exact same fucking premise, and he's like, yeah, he did the third one as well. Like, I watched it, it was awful. <laughs> what you should do is just make Death of Stalin 2. <laughs> <laughs> Ex-human Stalin, Stalin. He's good again. <laughs> <laughs> but he did actually, like I said, he did produce one one great masterpiece, which was, you know, I think will truly withstand the test of time much better than even the thick of it. And he did it in 2021. And what he did is it's you can you can get the whole thing. It's, I think, it was on sale. Um, he wrote a mock epic poem in the style of Paradise Lost no. called Pandemonium. And I'm going to read out <laughs> a little bit Do of it. Do not read Just from a- the book. Yeah, oh, yes, I will. Tell, uh, <laughs> tell first of one who fought that bat and tackled truth as it clawed and ravaged his beating lungs and near ended life in some ventilated corner of a ward. Orbis Rex was he known on high by all the gods, world king by birth and plan, though the gods, sensing men would store in fear of his breeding, transformed Orbis to mere earthly Boris, spurring love and laughter from <laughs> us on hearing this more mortal name. Say how this hero Boris seemingly felt by evil bite, coughed back up his gleaming soul, renewed and rode out to fight, sadness with birth, and brought the tilting light into the darkest homes and streets of his kingdom. Kingdom. All right, yeah. So I go back to my earlier point about how do the people who know this guy? <laughs> should we, should yeah, how, we talk? how can how can Coogan stand to be in that fucking Doctor Strange Love on stage thing later in this year? Honestly, yeah. Listening to that, you have to say just like at the end of the day, what a cunt. Should we yeah. talk about some other stuff that's not aged very well? Yeah, if we want to talk about bits that haven't aged well, one thing, one thing I caught. Oh God. Um, I think it was just the last episode of season three, and I don't know. Like, I, I just accidentally, like on iPlayer, I accidentally scrolled down a little bit and saw um the content warnings under the under the video. Oh wow! Um, and so at least one episode, as well as contains strong language, also had a separate warning for contains discriminatory language. Uh, um, that could be any number of, the of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think there's yeah, actually three. And, um, Oh, three. There's oh, only also, two. Did, uh, there's so, anyone, if like, you want to repeat all of those verbatim, I'm, I'm struggling to remember <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's also like um, fuckloads of ableism. Season three yeah. is just like rife with transphobia. Yeah. For yeah. you know, for the, think, no other reason than it's a British comedy from the 2000s. There's also there's also uh, transphobia in one of the season four episodes where um, Tucker comes to see Ollie in hospital. Yes. Yes. Yep. Oh, also, saying, like, also had, while we're talking about this, your... Stuart's pronunciation of the letter Z. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. he, he pronounces it Z, and that annoyed me, so I made a note <laughs> oh, of it. Oh, that's yeah, that's. I, well, there's a good bit on that note where like. Um, Peter Mannion is talking to Phil, and Phil's like, "Where'd you last go on your vacation?" And Mannion just glares at him. He's like, "I have never been on a fucking vacation in my life. In this country, <laughs> we call it a holiday." <laughs> good, good heated Tory moment. I thought. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He's standing but up yeah, to like... American imperialism, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, considering the whole the, the whole central gimmick of the show is like sweary Scotsman is funny, haha. Like, do you know what I mean? They do, especially in the later seasons, get carried away with that. Yeah, where, like you know what I mean. They're clearly like because the the first two are like th- what three episodes each or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's two hour long specials which just do not need to fucking exist. Um, and then there's like. The I quite like those episodes, specials, to be honest. Like when they're chucking I mean, they're not... cheese at Julius Nicholson. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's, there's some good stuff. There's some good stuff like throughout, but it's just far too fucking long and self indulgent. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? Like they 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 basically stop editing themselves after like the second series because they're successful now. They don't need to like cut their ideas down. It's you might as well just like do a couple of like hour long episodes, have eight episodes a series instead of three. Yeah. Well, yeah. it worked you know, for J.K. Just, Rowling, so it's it's like yeah, they're still they're still doing they're still doing some some satire, but the main point of the show is like the haha, this yeah. guy's like yelling slurs at people hour, and also like if we didn't if we weren't making eight episodes of this, Chris Addison might have to get a real job. So <laughs> yeah, Christ, he was like, oh, I can use this to get in the door as a director. <laughs> you know, learn, now yeah. he directs loads of TV. I guess, which um, you know, good career transition for him, and I, I'm happy with that because it means he's not. If it keeps him the off screen. the fucking camera, I'm happy. Precisely, <laughs> yeah. I've heard he's very pleasant to work with as a director. So keep at that, Chris. Get off Twitter as well while you're at it, and stop, um, <laughs> stop bollocking uh, nice Tory canvassers at your door who just want to stop the Starmer menace. <laughs> He doesn't appear oh. to be doing much, though. That's the good news, like Chris Addison. Like, oh no, he good. does breeders, which is shit. Is that is that the thing with Martin Freeman in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's bound to be shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of it. There's a there's a lot of just like calling people gay in the show, isn't there? It's yeah. very two yeah. thousands mm-hmm. playground banter, just like you massive gay shite or whatever. Uh, that's yeah. just the tip of the iceberg. Like, but you know. In terms of all the swearing in the show, I think some of the stuff that's aged better for me is not the, you know, cock what proto cock womble compound swears. Mm. It's when just like, you know, it's kind of cutting and to the point. It's like, you know, the problem with Terry is uh well she's shit. Just like something like that. That that to me, that made me snort with laughter when I was watching yeah. a bit earlier. Um partly because yeah, it's astounding to me that you remain unmuddled. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one but then that is kind of in the florid classic uh quintessential thick of it mode isn't it another one yeah. line that i enjoyed was uh you used a lot of words this morning it was like a will's health lecture <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of like there's a lot of very like good patter in the show um, but everyone remembers it as the like oh yeah and then he like threatens to fucking like stick stuff up somebody's dick and like yeah, rip their that. skin off and like rub their nuts up and down their mom's leg or something like he that. Does you know that, what I mean? Something like that in every episode in season three, I swear. And he doesn't do it in the earlier episodes, but in everything in season three, it's like, right, how am I gonna like murder you and fuck for corpse I in mean, some novel one, way? Yeah. One of the one of the better bits in the uh, I think it's in that first episode actually is Malcolm takes uh, Hugh Abbott out of the room with. Uh, Angela Heaney and like he's yelling at her yes, from the other side of a of a door. <laughs> yeah, of from a, the class. Fucking, yeah, it's amazing that. And then Terry opens the door to offer her tea and biscuits, and she can hear them fucking yelling. Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's a really fucking good bit. Yeah, it's a great scene. That like. I think they just got excited because Peter Capaldi was so good in the role. And people fucking mm. loved he him. Is, he is, I mean, like, to be, yeah, like, to credit where it's due, Peter Capaldi's amazing. Uh, yeah. Man, Most of the cast is amazing. Man, play, yeah. Yeah, the cast is really good. Like like I say, we didn't really mention Jamie much, and I think, like, mm. fucking Paul Higgins, isn't it? He yeah. is great in it, yeah. I think he's he's really, really fucking good, and it shouldn't work. It's sh- because he's like, you know what I mean? It shouldn't it shouldn't work to go, well, yeah, yeah oh, you know Malcolm Tucker. What if we had Malcolm Tucker too? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. <laughs> a but Scottish it, man. And he was the only yeah, other character it, they uh, brought over to in the loop as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it's just it's <laughs> like it's um it works somehow and it's great. 
there's that amazing scene in, in the loop where he kicks the printer to death when like with Julius. Yeah. Is it- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the music, it's just fucking vowels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Foreign got- subsidized vowels. <laughs> <laughs> you've got you've got Glenn basically as a Julius Nicholson type character, just like oblivious posh posh twat like in that episode you know, although isn't nicholson based on andrew adonis just like this big yeah, I think bald so. blue sky thinker you know one of blair's <laughs> yeah. blair's big brains <laughs> i've not thought about andrew adonis in fucking years oh, me man, neither what's he up name. to nowadays fucking hell why uh, is he, he not uh, big in the starmer he, thing couldn't tell you the starmer's pro brexit he... He did something for the Tories. He was their something something czar. He like he uh, yeah. yeah. He like I he worked for that cunt idiot. He worked for the Since Tories. He blocked, me on, he, he blocked me on Twitter for saying he looked like somebody had taught their dick to read the Times. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking sucks, oh. man. He's awful, Andrew Donis. Yeah. But oh, that was another thing, actually. Like he was gonna yeah, he took a job as, like, transport czar for the Tories, and then he was like, oh, I love the EU, I want to run as a Labour MEP candidate, and uh, I assume Corbyn was like, oh, I don't know about that, and then the PLP were just like, what? 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 And sure enough, Andrew Adonis <laughs> was on the Labour MEP candidate shortlist, despite having just fucking left Labour to work for the Tories for a couple, uh... couple of years. That's how it's another no. rule for them, isn't it? You know, <laughs> and yeah. and on that note, do we want to call that? An I think episode? we can call it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, 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 I think we've covered it as well as it needs covering. Good fun. Yeah, on, I, I, on, I had on fun. The, yeah, on the whole, good TV show. Fuck Armando Iannucci. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Um, we'll forgo the comment or commentary um, on the flimsy excuse that this was actually a cultural committee episode. Yep. So uh, we, we're all free. Um, so, uh, first off, Jack, I would like to thank you very much for coming on. Um, You're would welcome. Would you like to plug anything? Uh, just real politic, basically. I mean, just, yeah, check out our election coverage. Subscribe to the Patreon. Please subscribe to the Patreon. Like, I'm on to my last uh, bag of weed with this month's UC money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> please. Uh, but, yeah, no, just, like, uh, you know, check out Real Politic. And I think if you enjoyed this uh, this episode... Um, of podcasting as praxis with my gen my generous contributions uh, i'm sure it's like it's a, again you- euphemism for not being able to shut the fuck up uh, i you know i'm sure you'll love the show <laughs> yeah are you thinking yeah, about everyone- starting your own podcast well listen to real politic and it might tip you over the edge and you, yeah and you- yeah and, and yeah, you will you definitely, definitely will. fucking end up making that mistake <laughs> um, are you th- are you thinking yeah, about no. writing your own <laughs> epic poem don't Shut up. Be quiet. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> do not do that by any account. <laughs> All right, well, thanks thanks for having me on, guys. I know, anytime, always, mate. always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for coming on, mate. Thank Come back anytime. On the note of um, election coverage, uh, oh, no. so I'm, I'm of the understanding, Jack, that you are going to be joining yes, Sin. Yes, and I, I hear that you comrades are also. Yes, uh, well, we might be dipping in and out. We are going to run our own stream. That's fine. Um, yeah. Because the market With loves competition, you see. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. I understand <laughs> other people are going to have their own streams going, uh, but I will be happy to be on the stream, uh, you know, to, to hang with you on there at any point in the night. Uh, although I may also use the uh, times which there's plenty of people on the stream other than me to like sneak out for a joint at some point, but uh, <laughs> I, th- I think as, as I you think should. it'll be fun. As, as long should. as you share with the class, that's yeah. Fine. You all come down. We'll do, we'll <laughs> yeah, do it in person. Enough for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, do, we'll have two rival streams going in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just like if you're listening during election night, DM Jack and you know he'll come around to your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do. I'll do a personal <laughs> podcast for everyone who gets in touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, that will be on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash PraxisCast. I don't have a time that we're going to be starting that. It will be before ten anyway. Um, presumably, we're going to just fucking play some Hell Divers for like one last taste of like fun democracy before the bad stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on all the all the seats we really care about, like watching Luke Akehurst cry, 
Um, watch God, I hope he loses that. Would be win. very good. Oh, please, God, let us see Wes Street and cry. Um, and thank him, never really now. I want to see her cry too. And Prafel yes. Nargun, so, uh, that piece of shit. That scab. Yes, uh, that's the guy running yes. against Corbin. He's not. I don't think he's got very much name recognition. But <laughs> which we're hoping yeah. that extends to the fucking constituency. Yeah, long as may well. that remain the case. <laughs> I say. Yeah. Uh, and I hope so, Starmer. Yeah, um, we have a list of dickheads that we loses just to Andrew Feinstein. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well. Yeah, there is there is a chance, yeah, an outside think chance so. that you might just fuck but in it. my heart of hearts. The the biggest fucking rake that he could possibly step on. Can <laughs> That'd he be do awesome. it? We'll find he out. Lost his seat. They put oh, immediately so put Starmer in the House of Lords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so that'll be election night. So do check that out. Twitch.tv forward slash Praxis Cast, and of course, um, uh, opposing competing coverage on Twitch.tv forward slash SK the Crusader. Um, bonus episodes available. We have just dropped a bonus episode, not um, not more than fucking twenty four hours ago, probably depending when the fuck this one comes out. That's patreon.com forward slash Praxis Cast. You'll get that. All the rest of the bonuses and Discord access. And if you would like some merch. Um, perhaps a t-shirt um, about the pasokification that the Labour Party desperately fucking requires uh, those are available at practicecast.tml.com you can also get one about how hot it is <laughs> you yeah. can get buy, buy the PASOK t-shirt turn up at the fucking local polling station to you know look snazzy while you go to draw a cock in a box but make sure it's not the Labour box because they will claim that's a vote for them anyway um, that'll do us so goodbye Peace. Yeah, bye. bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.